everybody to join in with us as we praise and sing and worship and then uh, hearing the word of the Lord unto us today for what he wants us to hear. Uh, we just want to be free in the Lord, no constraints, praise God, no programming. We just want to let the Spirit lead us, glory. But I like opening up with worship. It, it gets me into uh, a place in the Lord uh, so that uh, I'm ready to do whatever the Lord wants to do through me and to see him do it through you all. We tried to get Paul up here to lead uh, songs, but uh, we're going to take a poll and... Uh, and vote yes or no for Paula and Gary to lead a little worship. <clears throat> of course, that may be carnal, so we better not do it. <laughs> I'm sure that if she feels it, she'll do it, right? Praise God. Aren't you glad for the love of God? Oh, my Lord, hallelujah. I was talking to Bobby Jean this morning, and I miss her. My, my, I miss her. And I was talking to her and her daughter, Connie, before they went to their church this morning, and uh, we were talking about uh, some wonderful spiritual things in the Scripture. And uh, it's just, uh, it was a wonderful time of sharing uh, about the ephod of the, that the priest wore uh, and about the Urim and the Thummim, and, and we were talking about what a responsibility it is and it it should make us quake in our boots to be speaking as the mouthpiece of God uh, the scripture says if any man speak yes let him speak as the oracle of God That's right and what does that word oracle mean Gary I know you've looked it up and searched it out <laughs> No, I'm surprised. Seriously, um, Oracle, you know, it, it's it, it's a wonderful thing, but it's a great and terrible thing to be put in that position where you have to be so yielded to the Lord that you're not ministering what you want to minister. You're not saying what you think everybody ought to know. Uh, and, and we're getting more into that place in God. I can sense it where we are starting to <laughs> let God arise and his enemies be scattered. What does it mean, Gary? It's, it's a doozy. Oh, I knew it would be. <laughs> it's, it's an arrangement or a placement creating order. Ooh, my, my, my. Don't, Lord, don't let me have a Holy Ghost fit right here in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, that's powerful. Wow. Uh, and, you know, we've been ministering that for years now. Yeah. That we're ministering a creative word, Jane. Creative. And uh, it's not just preaching anymore. It is ministering a creative, ordered, arrangement word. Amen. My, 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 my. Amen. Uh, but we, uh, I'll have to, Bobby Jean, watch this now, and, and that'll add to our conversation this morning. We don't know when she's going to be able to be back. Her insurances, uh, she's got the insurance on the house, the insurance on her car, and a loan that's tied in with all of that, and they are running her around. We need to pray for her because... The way it's looking, it could be until after New Year's that she can get back. Uh, we'll be all right. God's going to see us through that. But uh, I'm kind of upset at the uh, insurance companies in the bank because uh, the, the, the guy that's supposed to fix her car that got wrecked while she was down here in Tennessee, it was sitting in front of her grandson's house and either a garbage truck or somebody hit it out on the street. And uh, so they uh, keep telling her, we don't know if we're going to cover this or not. And, you know, she, she just paid $1,600 into that insurance for the year. And, uh, uh, and plus uh, the car, you know, is thousands of dollars. 
And um, so uh, we need to pray about that. Uh, but the mechanic that they referred her to, to, to have the car towed to, he was telling Bobby Jean, well, you know, I don't have anything open until after New Year's. And I'm thinking, what kind of a mechanic is this that he doesn't have anything open for that long? But I guess that does happen. If the good thing about that is he must be a really good one <laughs> if he's booked up that long. Uh, but anyway, we need to pray that that'll move for Bobby Jean. We're, we're at peace about it all. Uh, Bobby Jean's trying to be at peace with it all because she's right there handling it, and I'm not. Uh, but God orders our steps, praise the Lord. And we know that all of our situations, God is in control of it all. So uh, uh, let's remember that. Um, and I don't know yet if I'm going to be able to drive up there or not and see her during this time. I want to. I just don't know when or, or whether or not I can do it. So we'll see about all that. Amen. But we miss her. Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, what's the song you want to sing, Gary? Praise the Lord. <laughs>
two senior citizens up here trying to lead worship. song uh, that uh, he will uh, uh, give me a, a, a 
no, that's not it. But man, I can't even get all the words. Um, I really like it. It has something to do with the word, the living word, I think. It's an old song. No, I was thinking of that one, but uh, let's go ahead and sing that one. I, I can't get a hold of uh, this other one. He's a
And you know, I thought, that ain't, that ain't what that song ought to say. It ought to say they're going to know. <laughs> Everybody's going to know who Jesus is. Lord, Savior, Master, Hallelujah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, glory. Everybody in, that's ever been born of a woman is going to know that, glory to God. So I, I started singing it that way uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, I, I, I love the way that uh, some of the songs, I was telling Gary, he was singing an old song way before my time. <laughs> And, uh, uh, but it uh, had truth in it. And I say, you know, some of those old songs really had truth. They, they, uh, they were caught up out of themselves with all the indoctrination they had in them when the Spirit came upon them to write those songs. And they're the ones that really was spiritually anointed. The others were more like country songs. They just thought up little ditties. That would sound good in a rhyme. But if they were really caught up in the Lord, it spoke truth. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, amazing grace, oh, my Lord. Uh, you know, you could think of, uh, I know uh, uh, Fred Hunter sang at, uh, in Canada, and uh, I don't think I have the cassette tape anymore of it. But um, Terry Miller... Uh, one of the elders there up in the the move is what they go by, the move. Uh, and they're up in uh, Saskatchewan, whatever that is, not, not Sas Sasquatch. Saskatchewan. Sask yeah, that, that. Uh, and uh, Fred sang like I had never heard it before. Uh, this old song uh, that was, uh, and oh, I wish I could remember which one it was. But anyway, right after, and, and I heard uh, about 2,000 people there that were gathered. I heard 2,000 people singing in the spirit, worshiping the Lord exalting God, and it was one of the most powerful times I had heard on cassette tape. And uh, then Terry Miller gets up, and he ministers one of the purest words I've ever heard on reconciliation. And uh, uh, I, I told Terry, I said, man, that message that God gave to you, you were out of yourself. And, uh, uh, and uh, he gave glory to God, you know, of course. Uh, but it was marvelous. But that old song uh, that, that uh, Fred sang just brought the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have a word for somebody out here in the camera. Uh, your days have been short. And your nights have been long. God has just been giving you some relief at times. And you've stood the test. And when others have come against you, you didn't hold it against them. You continued loving and showing grace. And my word to you is, is that God is going to give you the former and the latter rain in one month. You are going to be endowed with an anointing of a third dimension because you have lowered yourself and conducted yourself with humility. God is going to exalt you in the eyes of the people and you're going to be one that is trusted to give the right word at the right time. And God's going to give you a people, in fact, 
that you're going to be ministering to. And I see this is going to be done on the internet. But I want you to know today, God sees you, God knows you, and God has not forsaken you. He is getting you ready for the things that he wants to do in your life later on. I don't know who that goes to. It might be more than one person. I don't know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
before you gave that word to somebody, the Lord spoke to me that there was going to be a word going out. I just want to bear witness. I just want to bear witness that that word you gave was the Lord.
fullness has come. Build up the waste places. It's not tomorrow, it's now. Restore paths to This people 
Jane, you're going to start burst, bursting forth. Uh, I see it as a an, as a star burst. That's the only way I can describe what I see. And God's going to have to do it suddenly with you because your mind thinks too much. Will people receive it? Will people receive me? Will they look at my weaknesses and not hear the word of the Lord? But it will come forth out of you like a lion with a roar. And you're not to think about it. You're not to try to help it. Just let God do what he wants to do through you and the people will be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, I want you to know that, dear one, that that God's going to do something great in you. Uh, but right now, he's, he's working things out in you from past hurts. Do you know what I'm talking about, past hurts? People that have come against you and people that have talked about you. God's working all of that out in you. And when it's all worked out, I'm telling you what, there, there is going to come. And when the word comes, healing comes. Amen. Healing comes. So uh, just be obedient to the Lord and don't think about it. Don't try to explain it. Don't try to uh, uh, let the people know your heart. They know your heart. They know that you're tender before the Lord and you have more love than uh, most of the people I know. Hallelujah. So that shines forth and just get lost in God and let that word come forth. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand and a Amen. praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this is a transition time for all of us. Hallelujah. What's that song that Charlotte wrote? And I don't even have a book. The lower key, the next lower key. You're now in resurrection. sing minister and minister sing and uh, we're not to wait for a, a time where Gary or me or Zach's going to get up to minister uh, we're, to, we're to be uh, the same uh, ascension throughout the whole service and the key to that is when someone's ministering as the oracle of God 
You need to get caught up into that with them. You need to get so one in that that you almost know what's coming out of their mouth next. That's the oneness that God is wanting to create, not only in our group, but in every group that's worshiping the Lord in the kingdom message. God's wanting to make us one. Now, we always think doctrinally when we say that. It's not about doctrine. It's not about me saying, oh, I believe everything Phyllis believes. Amen. Me and Phyllis, we're just down the line. The same belief. That has nothing to do with that. Becoming one is in the heart. It's in the flow. It's us giving ourselves one to another, complementing one another with the Spirit of the Lord in us. Glory. Until there is a symphony of, of sound going forth out of us. Not, not audible sound, sound, glory to God, that went into all the earth when in Jesus' day. It went into all the earth, it says. Hallelujah, the sound of it. So we're doing that, and we want to keep doing that. Praise the Lord. But get caught up into this same spirit. And you know, it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It's the same spirit that emptied that tomb. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the same spirit that uh, took Jesus uh, to Sheol and into Hades and to deliver captives unto captivity. Hallelujah. And to preach the everlasting gospel to the prisoners. Oh, hallelujah. The same spirit is upon you, I say. Hallelujah. It's upon you this morning. Same spirit that raised up a dead body, Jesus' dead body, and made it new. Hallelujah. Yes, is upon you this morning and upon me. Glory to God. Let's let it do its work, everybody. Hallelujah. And you out there uh, watching it uh, electronically, call, get call, don't, don't sit there and drink your coffee and space out on us. Hallelujah. Get caught up. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and enter in to all that God has for us. God's not through yet. Amen. Much is yet to be done in this service. But I wanted us to realize that. I need to be lifted up into the heavens so I can hear that word. Amen. That's going to give me life. Glory to God. And there's anointing in this place. There's a, yes. a, a, a word has stood up in our midst. Amen. And it's going to speak for itself out of vessels of clay. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Do you have another song, Gary? You said something just now. Boy, well, you have a word? This in a Whatever. Long, long time. Well, I got I to I say this. falling down. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> uh, well, it's all right. I'll just... Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah, it just messed up. I'll be all right. Uh, I just want to say this. Talk about a oneness in the spirit right now. Uh, before before you started singing uh, The Wolf and the Lamb, that, that song started coming to me, and then you started singing it. And then before you said Jane's name, the Lord spoke to me Jane's name. And then you started talking about us being a symphony, and I don't know if some, everybody remember this or not, but Bob preached a message some years back at the church, and he used his phone, and he, he gave the sound of an orchestra tuning how horrible it sounded remember that he gave the sound he said listen to this and you know we, we're all instruments of the Lord he said this is what we sound like when we don't come together <laughs> and then and then after they were tuned and after they were ready and after they were in their place then he played the finished product and it was so beautiful and I I, I don't this song this little ditty of a chorus, I want to sing it. I hadn't thought of it in forever. 
it, it come out of my church years and years ago there in North Carolina. Make me a symphony, a symphony of worship. I lift my hands in. it is. is uh, and it always makes me crack up but it, it, it it's it's when the the guy comes while they're playing all of their instruments and this guy comes out from behind the curtains and he has this uh, triangle on yeah. a string yeah and all this music leads up to where he goes ding <laughs> And that's the only thing he has to do is go out there at the very end, go ding. But it, it finishes it all off. <laughs> hey, Amen. It wouldn't be that great without that man come. And sometimes you feel that way. I do. Lord, you know, why should I have, why should I give out such a small thing? It's not going to make any difference. All this fantastic word that's being given and all of these qualified musicians and Lord, why would you have me go out there and just give a ding? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we have to realize our place in this. Yeah. It's not how much, it's where it comes forth at. The timing of the Lord. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. Everything's in its right time. Everything has to manifest when God says, come forth, we come forth. Amen. It's, it's by the command of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I just saw uh, Michelle's song uh, somewhere uh, in the office, I believe it was. And it may be on my desk, I don't know. But I command you in the name of the Lord, set your mind at ease. I command you in the name of the Lord. Do, 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 do. Would you look in there, uh, Zach, right quick on my... No more death and no strife. I command you in the name of the Lord. Just walk in liberty. I command you in the name of the Lord. Set your mind at ease. I command you in the name of the Lord. No more death and no strife. Just my pure life. I command you in the name of the Lord. Walk in liberty. I hope you can find that because it's got more words to it. And you know, Michelle almost didn't even tell us that she got that song. Uh, and... Uh, uh, she finally told Charlotte and I, you know, the Lord gave me a song. And uh, she said, uh, I'm going to try and sing it for you. She said, it's just a, it's just a nothing song, she said, but uh, this is what came to me. <laughs> and that has blessed more people. And we don't sing it enough. Uh, I, I never remember the words to it. But the little things matter in the scheme of things. Uh, you know how that is where uh, one snowflake doesn't amount to a whole bunch by itself. But I've seen three feet of snow by, fall by one snowflake at a time. And uh, not at a time, but one, uh, one snowflake after another. And uh, pretty soon it builds up and it's powerful. So uh, uh, we need to come together like never before, and God's going to bless us for it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, Frank Lopez's song, I don't know if I can remember it or not. I can't remember anything this morning. Uh, living in union, walking by the Spirit, bringing forth the man-child by the word of do You've heard it. Um. <laughs> Living in union by the spirit of love. Da 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 da. A lot of uh, part songs this morning. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'm done. I'm getting out of the way here. That was something we were talking about with Bobby Jean is that her daughter said, well, I'll tell you, I'm so scared of the pulpit. Uh, I, I worship off to the side, off the platform. She leads worship. Because she said... Uh, when I don't want to get in the pulpit unless the Spirit of the Lord is on me and I know I'm saying what he wants me to say. And uh, I, t uh, I wanted to tell them, I said, well, when I first started out preaching with Charlotte, I was a little whippersnapper, I'll tell you, skinny as a rail. And um, I had the same thing. I didn't want to say anything in service unless it was Boom, the word of the Lord. And that's how I preached for a long time. I, I got up in that little church and I'd come racing out of my seat to get up there, grab the mic, minister and spirit be moving everything. And then almost in mid-sentence, I'd know when the spirit was lifted and I didn't say another word and I sat down. 
as you can see, I've become much more carnal since then. <laughs> Gary, I know you have a word. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this here working. I, I, uh, it's falling down. <laughs> I probably should because uh, yeah, be all right. I guess this, I guess this one here works. Oh, there it is. Uh, you know, you were talking about being in such a place of transition, and certainly we are. Uh, you know, I was thinking of of the. Uh, the Lord began to quicken something to me earlier today about how that the, 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 it came time for transition when the, the uh, children of Israel, they had been uh, wandering for 40 years and it come time to, to go over to the new place and the 12 spies came back and they all saw the same thing. But only two of them said, we can do this. And the other 10 saw what they saw, but there was something about them that said, we can't do this, the fear. And uh, the Lord began to kind of quicken something in my spirit, Bob, of how that, and you know, we know, we know we're going somewhere in God. We don't have a clue where or, or what we're to expect or anything. We just know that God has taken us into a new dimension. And, uh, you know, we're constantly trying to, second guess God we're trying to figure out okay God you did this in days gone by probably we'll do this and he always surprises us yes. and the thing that I, I keep hearing in my spirit is this is that God has brought a people meaning I, I'll call them kingdom people for lack of a better description here but he's brought us out of the old the dead so many times you know, we, from one, one place to another, one dimension, or the scripture said, one glory to another. And as we've done this, we've reached a place now that I believe in the time frame of God, we're about to make a serious transition we've never imagined before. Now, I also believe this, as long as it's out there in the spirit realm, we have no responsibility. In other words, it's just all God and we got to do nothing. So we just live our lives and do our thing. But when it comes out of the spirit realm and begins to manifest, you know, it's like for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, they preached about Messiah coming. They prophesied Messiah's coming. All of the old prophets of the Old Testament, all of the people in the scripture and, and everybody, whether they were a, a, a priest or not, or whether, the, you know, the, the children of Israel of every tribe and tongue, they knew they were taught. They understood Messiah is coming. And yet when he was manifest, there come a time when that word had to be made flesh. And I believe we're in a place now that God is making that word flesh. We don't know what to do with it. It's scaring us. Yeah. And it reminds me of the, tri the, the, the 12 spies that come back, the 10 spies. They come back and they saw it. They tasted of that fruit. They saw it. They, they knew it. They, they knew everything Joshua and Caleb knew. They knew it all. But there was something in them, Bob, that began to scare them and said, you know what? It scares us that this word is now about to be made flesh. What? And when you study that out, the children of Israel had been out of Egyptian bondage for only 11 days when the spies went over. They were there 40 years. And I, I, I did a little study on this just this past week or so. The number 40 not only means the number of tr trying and temptation and things. We've always preached that and taught that. But the flip side of that, the number 40 is greater because it, it speaks of new birth, new rest restoration, and a new vision or a new uh, a, a dream or a new anointing. And, and the Bible says that the spies went over and spent 40 days in that new place. They received something, Bob. They received a, a vision, a revelation. They received something that the other people had not 
not seen because they, they had not yet walked into that new place. Now, they come back, and because of their fear, because of their, their, their lack, their, you know, and when you stop and think about what we're about to do, it kind of scares us that God is about to require of us some things that we've never, we've talked about, preached about, prophesied about, sang about, but now it's about to be walked out in shoe leather, and it's scaring us to death. I believe that when they came to that point right there, that they said, you know, and, and because of the Bible said that they spent 40 days over in the promised land, they come back and because of their unbelief and their fear, the Bible said God told Moses, turn them around, and they wandered for 40 years. One year for every day they were in the promised land. 40 meaning they had to have a new birth, a new restoration, a new revelation. There had to be something birthed in them before they could walk into that promised land. Not only this, but all of those, the Bible said, the murmurs and complainers and unbelievers, they all had to die out because they still had ties to yesterday. Too many times we want to hang on to baggage of yesterday, not realizing God's requiring us that we let go of all of our yesterdays and, and, and you know it, we don't have a problem letting go of, of bad stuff we don't have a problem letting go uh, of our bad items our bad things our bad habits our bad thoughts our bad whatever it's the good stuff we figure God can use and we don't realize God says I, no flesh shall glory in my sight so what does he do he turns them around now everybody out of three and a half million people only Joshua and Caleb were the two only original left that had never known Egypt that walked into the promised land and, and here we are now we're at a place that we're about to walk into a new dimension in God and here's what the Lord's been speaking to me and, and, and I, I'll be honest with you I'm kind of I'm at a place where I'm just going to share it but I don't even know what to do with it but God began to speak to me and he said you know I'm removing the fear uh, of walking into those places that you thought you were delivered from and you're going to bring life into those places that, that here, you know, uh, up until now, Bob, we only want to preach and sing and be in service with people that agree with us and that like us and that believe like we do. And, you know, we were talking about that earlier, that, that we want to be uh, uh, all of the, just like each other, you know. And, 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 and we don't want to go into some of these places that preach a quote, unquote, lesser order, lesser de denomination, a lesser whatever, whatever. And we don't realize God's got seed planted in every field and he requires us to go to that very field. And. and and, and as the God began to speak that to me, I thought, Lord of mercy, where are we headed in this thing? I don't understand, but I'm here to tell you, God says those that had fear could not walk into this thing. So he said, I'm about to take you. The fear, the perfect love casteth out fear. And there's that mature, and that word perfect don't mean unmistakable. It means a mature, a mature uh, love. God said, and you know, you stop and think about it. When Jesus ministered, he didn't just minister to those that agreed with him. He didn't minister to those, that, you know, that, that followed him around for the loaves and fishes. He went into the very devil's den itself and the, the Pharisees and Sadducees. He went to all those places and brought a standard of life into that thing. And I thought so much, Bob, this morning as you were ministering, I began in my mind. I, I saw Jesus standing talking to Mary and Martha in the scriptures there whenever Lazarus was dead and they said you know yeah uh, Jesus said don't you know your brother will live again and he had to deal with their religious mentality and training there really and I thought to myself Bob as I got to looking at that how many times did Jesus actually have to minister to people and overcome all of their religious objections that they'd been trained and educated and born with. That's what we're facing now. Amen. You start talking about reconciliation and you start talking about restoration. You start talking about these things and people fight that because they like their rapture and they like their devil and they like all of these other places where they, you know, uh, you know, I, I heard somebody say this a long time ago when we began to minister this word, uh, uh, people said something about, well, you know, God's getting rid of hell and stuff like that and they said well the, the, the reason people have trouble getting rid of hell or, or their definition of hell is because we got nowhere to put our enemies and, and we, have to, we have to find a new place for them and, and, and of course you know, we, we understand all that and stuff. But, but the Lord began to quicken something to me remember he told Mary and Martha they said Lord, Lord your brother will live again yeah Lord some glad morning because we've been taught someday it's going to be okay right. some glad morning and I was, I was watching something on TV yesterday or the day before, whenever it was, and they had an advertisement on there from a big, big name preacher. I think he's out in California. Uh, I won't call his name, but he's got a new book out after the rapture. And he started talking about all the stuff you better start doing in case you ain't ready. 
I don't know what the book costs. I need to get Bob one. But <laughs> God help me. But, but I thought to myself how that, that uh, you know, we sh- want to shy away from anything that's not 100% with us and flow with us. And we want to only go to the meetings that people agree with us and only do those things that people uh, love us. And, on. And, and, and Jesus, he had to stand there and tell and bring a standard of life and resurrection to, that, to Mary and Martha in that Lazarus situation. He walks in there and he said, don't you know your brother lived again? Yeah, Lord, some glad morning. And Jesus looked at him and said, but I'm, I'm the resurrection. I'm it. It's not a, it's not a feast day somewhere. It's not someplace out in the wild and then watch this I believe we're going to have to start dealing with kingdom people like that because, uh, and I think Zach brought this out a week or so ago, how that, that, that the, the kingdom ministry, a uh, 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 message is really nothing more than the old messages. We just rephrased it because, you know, we're still putting everything out there in the future somewhere. And God's saying, look, the word's going to be made flesh in the fullness. Isn't that what it said? When the fullness of the time came, God sent forth a son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. He didn't come to redeem himself. He was already life incarnate, but he came to read. And how did he do that? He had to partake of their shortcomings of their, where they were. He had to partake of that flesh. Here we are now. We're at a place where God has raised us into heavenly places and gave us a new mentality because we've changed and tasted of the promised land. Now we got to come back and say, you know what? Here's the resurrection. It's not out there somewhere. The resurrection's here and now. Oh, hallelujah. I am that day. Remember when he sat there and the Bible said he, he, he came into the, te- the, the synagogue as was his custom, meaning it was another Sunday, another day, just another, everything was the same. No big deal. And let me tell you something. When God begins to move and reveal his son in us to a hurting creation, it'll be no big deal. You're not going to have fanfare. You're not going to have great visions of light. You're not going to have great overwhelming revelation flowing out of your mind. It'll be just another day in the neighborhood and as he goes in and he asks for the scroll of Isaiah and he begins to read. The Bible said he closes the book and he sits down in that middle seat and said this day is this scripture fulfilled in you. It's not coming anymore. Now it's here. You're required. There's something required of you because now this thing's fulfilled. He tells Mary and Martha. He said this thing's fulfilled right now. I am the resurrection. Then he goes and raises Lazarus from the dead. Oh God in Luke the fifth chapter I remember the story. Remember the man that laid by the pool of Bethesda for 37 years. He laid there and, and, and he could never get in the water quick enough to be healed. Jesus asked him, wilt thou be made whole? He didn't say you want to get healed. Too many people have been healed and they've not been changed. Too many people, amen, they, they, they only want their flesh comforted. They want their mentality comforted. They want somebody to agree and enforce and reinforce their crazy doctrines and stuff. And Jesus told the man, wilt thou be made whole? And he said, Lord, I have no man to put me in the water. But another one comes. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. What did he do? He overcame the man's mentality. He overcame his religious training. Because you got to realize, Jesus did did a whole lot in that one statement. Number one, the guy, he just got through telling him, Lord, I got nobody helping me. I got to have some help before I can do anything. Jesus said, no, you don't. Take up your bed and walk. And he took up the bed. The Bible said, and immediately, that's what it says. He rolled up that little mat, that little bed, tucked it under his arm and began to walk. And the thing that blew everybody's mind was this. He overcome his his religious training, not just his physical ailments, but his religious training. For he said that it the next the very next sentence says it was the Sabbath day. <laughs> you don't do that on the Sabbath day. Don't mess with my doctrines. <laughs> oh my God! Don't mess with our doctrines. You can't do that. The Bible says. We, God, love, God love our hearts. We're such lawyers. We think, we, we think we're going to pin God in a corner. Like God, you said, see right here, you said. Like God's going, oh, man, I forgot that. And, 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 and he overcame. He overcame his religious training. 
because his, his religious training said, don't do that on the Sabbath day. Don't do it. You can't. And yet every time he turned around, he was healing somebody on the Sabbath. Amen. Remember the man that had the withered hand 18 years standing there and all these things have some deep, deep spiritual significance there. But, but for this morning, he had his withered hand. Jesus was in the synagogue. And right there, he took their own doctrines and said, is there not a one of you that if your ox falls in the ditch, you won't get him out on the Sabbath day? Right. Said, here's a man sitting here, needs some help. Stretch forth your hand. Overcome the man's thinking. Overcome everything and everybody by saying, stretch forth your hands. Oh, God, help me. Oh, my. This is, this is what we're about to witness. We're about to be sent. And, and, and you, you got to remember this. The Bible said in Acts 2, they were, and this is just, this is just hot off the press. I don't even know what to do with it, okay? They were all in the upper room. They all had the same mind. The Bible says, one mind, one accord, same room. Suddenly, the place was filled with a mighty rushing wind. We all know that story. But watch this. If it had been us, if it had been us there on that, that morning in the book of Acts, we would have called that church. We would have said, okay, we need a pastor. We're going to stay right here. Yep, yep. You can't come in here unless you agree with us and know us and like us and shandai each other. <laughs> but they came out of the upper room and the, Jesus said, now you're going to all the world. You're going to those that don't like you. You're going to those don't agree with you. You're going, what are you doing? You're not trying to convince them mentally or intellectually of what you're saying. You're there to minister resurrection life to them. It has nothing to do with what they think or feel. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. We spend a lot of time trying to convince people we're right. Don't we? You know, I, I was thinking, I, I was talking to somebody some years ago. I said, you ask any minister, priest, whatever, of any religion on the planet, I don't care who it is, ask them, are you preaching the truth? Every last one of them will tell you yes. Reading the same scripture out of the same Bible, they'll get a thousand different de uh, uh, definitions and ideas out of it, and yet they all got the truth and hate each other. Right. <laughs> so it's not, it's not that we're trying to make you think like us. No. That's not it. Jesus wasn't trying to make those people think like him. He was trying to bring a life that surpassed their religious understanding. I, I got to throw this out real quick. I just learned this uh, uh, um, one of the study books that I was reading, and I thought it was so good. It might have been a mirror translation in, in uh, what's his name's notes I, I picked up. I didn't know this, but the word religion, the word religion in the Latin, where it comes from, and I can't pronounce it, but it literally means to bind and tie up again and to keep them bound. That's religion. I didn't know that. And it, it broke down the word. The, the word re in Latin means this and L-I-G-O-N-E or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's where the word religion comes from. It's in the Latin, and this is what it means. I about fell out. I said, boy, if that ain't the truth. It's all about binding and controlling. Jesus said, whom the Son hath made free is free indeed we're here to set people free it's up to god you know paul said paul said one I, 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 I plant apollo's waters but it's god that gives the increase it's not up to us you know i might be or you might be able to to sit down with somebody and show them in their own bible this 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 and this and this here's why i'm right and here's why you're wrong and you might convince them but it'll all be head knowledge it won't be heart knowledge Somebody, somebody made this statement a long time ago when uh, uh, we were in one of the meetings that we used to attend out west, and I, I never forgot it. They said, you know we, know, we know God's given us a certain truth. We know this. We, we, we bear witness in our spirit, not that we're so much deeper, holy, or anything. It's just different from what's out there. And uh, they said it goes like this. It goes like this. You can take candy from a baby because you're stronger. But what you've got is a screaming baby. But if you give that baby something better than what they've got, you've got a happy baby. And this is where we are. We might be able to prove somebody intellectually, we're right, and the Bible says this, and da-da-da-da-da-da, you misinterpret it, and all you've got is somebody screaming. Yes, yes. 
But if you can manifest the Christ, manifest the life. I love that song. We've got to sing that. Manifest the light, the life of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. For the world must see him. Amen. And as he appears, the groaning captives shall go free. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. wow. Lord. My, my, my. Hallelujah. This is where we are. As we do that, they lay down. They lay down whatever they've had and gladly take up the greater. God gives the increase. God gives it. We don't do it. God does this. Oh, I'm done. Sing that song. I hope I can, hope I can remember whatever key it's in. Is it on? Okay. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I just want to share something because the whole message that Gary was talking about, maybe not the whole message, but one, one stream of it went on removing fear from his people. That's us. Okay, and I'm... I've always been a fearful person, very fearful. Um, when I first encountered God in my life, uh, God took me through three solid years of his school, and of which time I mostly obeyed the Lord a little bit anyway and everything he told me except for a few things I didn't because of fear. I was afraid. Uh, he, he took me through avenues that would throw fear into anybody. I mean, <laughs> he took me into, uh, like he'd tell me, I go into a strange church, and he'd tell me, he'd give me a message, a message and a song. Zip, zip, zip. I was in the spirit. And I'm sitting there in a strange church, maybe with a thousand people, you know. And uh, 
the visiting evangelist comes up and says, I can't preach tonight. Okay. He says, somebody, God's given somebody a message, and I can't preach tonight. And I'm scared to death sitting there. <laughs> and I'm saying, Lord, give it to somebody else. <laughs> give it to a man. <laughs> anyway, I never got up. I didn't obey that time. And one by one, different people stood up in the congregation and said everything piece by piece what God gave me. And I'll tell you, he really rebuked me on that, <laughs> you know. And then one time I go into a restaurant, and it has a little bar, and God says, go tell that bartender the Lord hath need of him. I looked at that bearded guy. He's a big guy. And I looked at that guy and I said, uh, Lord, he ain't going to believe me. <laughs> anyway, I went. No, I didn't go that time. I'm sorry. I Let's say I left. <laughs> anyway, and I saw that guy's face for at least two weeks before me. Oh, man. But what I'm saying is he took, he took me through three years of confronting fear, which at times I obeyed and at times I didn't. And that I had a, a vision. I wasn't asleep. I went to bed just the other night. Um, and I was seeing it was dark, but there were, I have night lights. Anyway, there's this, I opened my eyes because I was trying to sleep. I opened my eyes and there was like a, a more of a almost round, but it was oval, black dark thing on the ceiling where I was looking. And uh, I was seeing this through the middle of my forehead anyway. And uh, so I blinked. Anyway, I blinked. And when I blinked in that dark circle, uh, light came through, uh, and it was like, uh, I never have seen a light like this, but it was light. It was uh, like four, like a square of light. I never have seen, but it came through that dark circle. And every time I opened my eyes, I'd see the dark circle went and every time I blinked and I blinked about a hundred times, fifty, hundred times, that light would come through there and I moved my eyes. I thought, what kind of phenomena is this? You know. And uh so I checked and every time I moved my eyes, the circle would move where where I'd look. And every time I'd blink without fail that light would come through. And so the, and, and the thing of it is, it happened, I don't know how many times it was so beautiful and I couldn't get any reason why that would do that. And so, and I felt peace and I thought, the only thing that came to me was light shining out of darkness. And so I thought, well, Lord, what are you telling me, you know? And today, after I listened to uh, Gary, anyway, uh, it came to me, well, they talk about four square in Revelations, which 
I haven't yet figured that out, but <laughs> anyways, that it was it was a church, Foursquare, okay, and uh, so the only thing I could think of was, okay, we're the church, we are his body, and our light is shining out through that darkness all around us. The world is seeing everything black and dark, but we don't see that. We see the things that Father is doing through his people in, in, in Jesus. And, uh, and then yesterday, no, yeah, it was yesterday. I went to uh, check on some beds, and this girl, she greeted me. Her and I were the only ones there. She shows very nice. But anyways, I had a divine moment. We had a divine moment together. And um, she wasn't a Christian, but she had a grandmother that was Pentecostal, and she was, she, I don't know, I, God was giving me words to talk to this lady. There was no fear. He, he took the fear that I normally have uh, in difficult situations. But <laughs> anyways, he took that fear um, because I, I really didn't think she was going to be a listener too much, but she became a very good listener, and she saw, she saw, she started then telling me about her grandmother, that she was, that she had a church, it kind of reminded me of Bobby Jean and her Aunt Cora, but anyway, and she loved her grandma. And she said, I feel the same spirit with you as I do from her. And he told me about her church and everything like that. Or he, I say he, because I wasn't sure which. <laughs> yeah, her name was Katie anyway. <laughs> So I figured this girl. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to share that because I see that too. Uh, we count the cost, you know. When when you living for God fully, you love Him with all your heart. You count the cost. You've been through many things. You see failures where you failed, maybe, you know, but God never fails. And you count the cost. Well, I counted the cost finally. I didn't count the cost at first because I never knew to count the cost. <laughs> and But it's, it's a beautiful thing. The Holy Spirit is part of Father. It's him multiplying his children everywhere. It's so beautiful. And I hope you got something out of this, but I just want to say that because Gary's message just, I just saw my growth <laughs> a little. <laughs>
just going to say something really quick to add to um, <clears throat> what Gary had said. I was, um, you know, feeling a lot of a lot of the things that were said, and I was really thinking about back to the meetings because I had a lot of in my spirit at that time that that's been ministered this morning. Um, you know, it's almost as if I saw, you know, the service this morning, not not um, naturally. You know, if we think of a vision, we think of seeing all those things, but in the spirit. You know, this is something that's in the spirit that we enter into a place and and, and get a hold of it, um, but it's an eternal reality that's always there. <laughs> it's not that it comes and goes and is for a minute and then gone. I mean, it's 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 constant. Um, you know, it's for us to participate as a. Uh, you know, Bob said earlier in the worship and the praise and those things are really to elevate us into the place to be able to receive from the spirit. Um, I was I was just thinking of a couple things that really. Um, ministered to me, even the songs, those were really some of the songs I was going to, uh, the wolf and the lamb and, you know, we're now in resurrection. Some of those things were things that I had in my spirit, but I knew it wasn't, wasn't time there at the, at the meetings. But I think that for me, there's such a significance of what's going on that it truly is, um, changing the game, so to speak. I think that there's such a unity and an accord coming. And it was said that that unity is not getting in like uh, natural mindsets. And I do believe that that's been the order, even when this word was brought forth, is that God gives us something, even this morning, um, or as Gary said, that, that, that we would have those experiences, and that was in my spirit to minister on the upper room a little bit. We had those experiences where we receive a revelation or receive a word, then we try to build around it. We try to draw people to it. We try to make sense of it. We try to teach on it. We try to educate. We try to put it in its place in the scriptures, as was said, and we say, well, this was in the scripture, and now we're in this time of fulfillment, and all these things that we do. Um, and it just distracts us from really what God's doing. It becomes a, uh, you know, a distraction from really receiving that which the Lord has from that revelation, or that which that Lord has from that word, as we call it. You know, we, we start to formulate things as... Um, as the church would into to sermons and messages and teachings and, and things. And I'm not saying that we can't do those things ever if the Lord ordains it. I believe the Lord's going to have us expound on things and teach on things. But my point here is that I believe in these services and the gang gatherings we have, not just in October, but anytime we gather as a people, we are going to come together like in that upper room in one mind, one accord, and begin to receive of the Lord a word, an expression. And we're going to begin to minister that expression in that moment because that's contained within the Lord right now. As I said, it's all within the Lord right now. Uh, completion and wholeness and fulfillment and everlasting life and all those things are realities in the Lord right now. But we have to enter into those and receive of those and partake of those and become those realities in the earth realm. We have to begin to, to no longer... Um, come and go. See, I, I believe this about the upper room, that, that it wasn't just Pentecost. There was tabernacles and there was a, a wholeness within that. But because of it was that feast of Pentecost, that there was the, the nature of men that got a hold of that move and of that glory. But when they were in that place, there's only one thing that brings unity. There's only one thing that brings wholeness and peace. And that is entering into a place in the Lord that goes beyond this dimension. See, I've had that so much in my spirit about dimensions, um, and, and, and stay with me here for a second. I'm not talking about getting lost in things people do, but there's a reality of, again, when it talks about even the, the, in Acts 1, when Jesus gets caught into heaven, where does he go? What happens there? And I know it says that he was taken from them in a cloud, uh, kept them from seeing him. But we're not talking about Jesus going up into the sky somewhere. And as it says, it says he will return as he went. As we preach, we're not talking about Jesus returning geographically. We're talking about Jesus being brought into a place that was right in the midst of them. But now they had that cloud. They had that veil. They couldn't witness to it. They couldn't see it. Well, what we're in in this hour is Jesus is renting that veil and renting that cloud. We are seeing beyond, as was said last Sunday, seeing beyond that cloud into some things that have always been, that are always true. In that upper room, I believe the apostles began to get a glimpse and see something that was for this day. As I said last week, Paul saw things that were for this day. 
their realities in Jesus Christ. And so I say that between Passover and Pentecost and tabernacles. And again, we could get so caught on the fact of, you know, we are tabernacles and we understand this thing and miss all of it. <laughs> and I know I'm not preaching to people in the room. We're, we're, we're getting a hold of something here. But, but please, if you're following online, use wisdom. Don't get lost just in the, and I hate to even call it word of this thing anymore, the, the, the message or the teaching of this thing. Because the word of this thing is becoming alive. The word of tabernacles and the word of kingdom and the word of sonship and the word of all these things that have been brought down into messages and teachings. And I understand God's used that to call people into this thing. But I'm telling you, God's calling people into this thing differently in this hour beyond a message and a teaching. It's not going to be these things that draw men into Christ. It is going to be the living word that is expressed through a people in unity as was expressed this morning to where we're going to begin to amen and witness to this thing instead of having to come behind one another or cover one another or do all these things and former glories that have had to happen because it was confusion. It was Pentecost. It was part spirit, part natural. We are getting a hold of the thing that happened in that upper room that brought them into unison, into one accord, and brought a presence of the living God. But we're going to learn to continually flow in that and have that continually expressed instead of shutting that valve off. Because, you know, we can um, get into God and then get out of God. And I know some of that sovereignty, some of that's God revealing something. And then again, putting a cloud back over it and saying, that's not for now. I just wanted to reveal for a minute. And the Christ was revealed to us and then the Christ was hid from us again. But I'm talking about there are things that we do at times out of our natural mind and natural understanding that God's revealed something to us. And we put a cloud, that religious cloud of understanding back in front of that which God's revealed to us to say that doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. People won't receive it, as was said this morning to Jane. We get worried about how it's going to be received. We get worried about are people going to understand it. Is it for now? Well, I'm telling you, God has removed a cloud in the spirit for us to begin to see him as he is in a true reality of Christ's life that is not going to be like we thought it was. He is going to appear from out of the sky, out of heaven, he has appeared this morning, and he is no longer going to have to come and go and replace a cloud because we're going to begin to receive him and see him as he is. There was, um, as it was said about trumpets, I was thinking about, or uh, orchestra. I was thinking about that. See, what ministry of saw this thing as is truly just trumpets. And we want to blow our trumpet and have our place. And we just want to do this thing. And we want to be able to go and travel and tell everybody about the word that we have received from the Lord. But see, a trumpet alone doesn't do this thing. The trumpet may gather other people, but, a, but a, a, a compoundment, I was thinking about that orchestra, that's the difference of a minister and a body. A trumpet's a minister, a person speaking. An orchestra is the body flowing together. Many trumpets, many sounds that aren't just individual. And again, as was said, it's not just that everybody's blowing trumpets on different notes and different uh, messages and different frequencies, but it begins to be people here, the great orchestrators say, this is the note we're on. This is the key that you need to be in. Blow the trumpet in Zion this morning and let people hear. That's when we will begin to lead people to where Jesus is. And again, not gather them and say, come to me and Jesus will one day appear. That's not what we're doing. We're not saying come under the kingdom doctrine and one day we will become sons. Come under Melchizedek and one day we'll become kings and priests. We are saying come into the midst of where the Ark of the Covenant is in this most holy place and Jesus is here in the midst of us. Jesus has rent the veil and rent the cloud for us to have a gathering in a most holy place in an upper room experience where we begin to receive a Christ in this thing. It's no longer you receiving of me because that doesn't do it. No longer you receiving of the word that God's given me, but that word being expressed up out of me that's in season, in time, in, in a moment, in a glimpse that's life-changing. This same word that harpazoed me is harpazing, harpazoing you. And again, we get caught into testimony, into to, um, 
you know, talking about what's happened to us and ministering out of those things. And we get caught into, you know, this is what the church has taught us is we need to testify and we need to uh, be all these things. And again, I'm not saying none of those things have place in this day. What I'm saying, though, is those things are elementary in the sense of what God's getting ready to do. My testimony can only bring you so far. The kingdom message can only bring you so far. <laughs> Tabernacles can only bring you so far if it's just a message. Even if you receive it, even if you believe it, that can only get you so far. But then there comes a time of maturity to where we allow the Lord to bring us into another place. Where we become a trumpet player in the symphony instead of listening to the trumpets. That's what the call is. Are we going to learn how to blow that trumpet or are we going to just sit and listen and be onlookers and bystanders? Because, but just because we understand that we're a first fruit company doesn't make us a first fruit company. <laughs> just because we understand sonship doesn't make us manifested sons. See, people have mistaken that through the years and they'll say, because I understand sonship and it's completed in Jesus, now I'm a fully manifested son. That doesn't change a thing. If anything, it does what religion does and begins to draw people away from this message because they say, if that's what a manifested son looks like, I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> if they can still kill and slay and create confusion and tear down heavens, as was said, if they could just yank my candy away, that does no good. Right. That's what we have done with Melchizedek and sonship and kingdom is beat down people and slay people and tear them apart. We just want to tear down heavens. That's not what this order is. Because when Jesus appeared, heaven was in the midst of the apostles. That's what he says. <laughs> That's what the uh, point of him getting up and reading the scripture or the scroll in the temple was about was telling people, hey, you're reading about something way off, but it's not a far off from you. I'm right here in the midst of you. But if you can get beyond looking at me in the flesh, you will receive of it. And they asked him, what are you doing, Lord? Are you going away? I thought we were preparing a kingdom. I thought we were building something here. And all along, they didn't see what was in the midst of them. All along, we've had people gather service after service and not see what's in the midst of us. But, and that's why it's a small crowd. It's because God is not allowing those to continually gather in the midst of this place that aren't seeing it. It's the best way I know how to say it. And it's not that we are and you're not, because God help me, I hope that you are because we need you. We need you in your right place. I pray for you to receive it. It's not an elite thing that we need to understand it so we could have control over you and bishopry and uh, you know be over you. We're not here to be over anyone. We are here to undergird people and build up the waste places. But the reality is, is that God's speaking and demonstrating and showing something to ministry that is going to supersede people's, um, uh, supersede taking care of people's emotions or feelings or thoughts or opinions because it's beyond that. See, as Jesus was in the presence, I administered a little bit about that, that the dimensions that I'm seeing are that the dimension is right here in the midst of us, but it's not here. It's right over there. That it's a door that we go into, a place that we enter in through Jesus that takes us instantly into another experience is the best way to say it. Another law, another place that operates differently than we do in this world in terra firma that completely changes the game. It removes all limitations. It unbinds things that were bound in this realm and it unbinds them in that realm. As we enter into the spirit, there are things that we are trying to overcome that immediately become loosened. Amen. But as we wrestle with them, with flesh and blood, with prayer, that's just prayer that we've been taught, or scripture, it was we just read scripture, because I'm telling you, God's going to use scripture in a new and living way. God's going to use prayer. God's going to use word. That's what I've seen more than anything. Prophecy is going to have such a life to it in this day and in this place that it's going to speak life unto people. It's not just going to try to explain to them the future because God's not going to have onlookers and visionaries just to see the future. That's not what this is about. Because if I just see the future and we don't come into it, it does no good. And I can see your future and you may not come into it. 
as best as I can say it, on this side. God's going to, in his sovereignty, eventually get you into that place. But we're talking about a willing people that right now is saying, Lord, I see it. Get me in that place now. No matter what it takes, I want to be in my right place. I want to be standing in the throne room receiving from the Lord. I don't want to just be in the, the, most, or the holy place seeing what's going on or hearing or smelling or doing all those things anymore. That's been a, a day and an age and we've had glimpses of it. We're saying bring me beyond the veil to stay there and live there and abide there so that I no longer have to die day in and day out just to get back there. There's a word that is in a place that is right in the midst of us that we enter into in service and we partake of. And as we begin to enter in more and more into this place, it's going to assimilate into us as any food would, but it's going to have density and nourishment that changes us. It's going to begin to just change who we are. Again, we're looking to come in and get prayed over or blessed and healed and all those things are going to happen. But again, if that's all you're seeing in service, you're missing it. That's just going to happen. We're going to have to stop coming to a meeting or a service just to be blessed. That's, that's not what this is for. I don't know how many ways to say it. It's not to be callous. Now, we are going to inadvertently bless, but that's not our goal just to have you come with a prayer request and us pray over it and hopefully see God move. That's not what we're trying to do here. We are trying to change you. <laughs> we are trying to have ourselves changed. We are trying to no longer need those prayer requests to get by each week. We are trying to no longer need to struggle service after service just to get brought up a little bit. We need life as Jesus has life. And so as we get shifted into our place in God, that shifts us into that place where the river flows with life. No more dead valleys and no more wasteland and no more shadows. No more of any of those things. See, I was thinking a lot in my spirit about that ascension, about as, and it mentions that there in Acts as Jesus ascends into heaven, but not just resurrection. See, we have thought of this word as so much just being about resurrection, and it is. This is a word that speaks life and lifts somebody up out of a grave into a place of life, as it did me, as it's done you. It's lifted us out of our dead place in religion and out of our dead place in the world or wherever we were at before this thing, and it's lifted us up. But this word is not just about resurrecting people out of a grave. This is truly an ascension word that we have to ascend as Jesus did into a place in the Father where we can now see things differently. Resurrection just gets us back into this place really that people have come alive even in Pentecost. We can now understand gifts and we can receive and do different things and we can resurrect out of that dead realm and now we can operate in the Spirit and as it was said uh, to, to the apostles, go and wait. You're going to have the spirits, not only the baptism of water, now you're going to receive baptism of fire. We have to be resurrected to receive that baptism of fire because that's what that does to us is old life, even the water, old life into new life. But now what? Why were we resurrected? Jesus says, don't hold me and don't touch me. <laughs> Why? Because he's not meant to stay there. See, we were not resurrected into this thing to stay here, to just stay in a place outside of the camp. We were resurrected to be ascended into the Father so that we could be face-to-face and heart-to-heart and truly be, again, we know we're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. But have we come alive to that, really? Have we become like he is? Have we come into that identity? That ascension takes us to where now we become elevated in a place. We enter into another realm, another dimension, to where we begin to see things as we have those appear to us on this side, and we begin to receive of things that are in heaven being spoken into the earth. We enter into that very same place that the Scripture talks about that Jesus went into. Don't think of that as something that happened 2,000 years ago in a far off and he's went away somewhere. That's that place in the midst of us. Right now, if you could just hear it and see it and touch it and taste it, that is that place that we begin to hear what each other are being ministered to and that word of unison that we saw this morning, that word of um, 
Affirmation comes only from that place. Yes. It's different than Bob getting up and saying a message and saying, I agree. That makes sense. I've read that too. This comes from a place of us entering in and then ministering out of a place that, the, that, that those that have crossed over have been gathered unto that have walked far enough in this word and have continued on in this word on the other side that Jesus is and was and became when he resurrected and ascended into the Father and sat at the right hand of the Father. This is this place that has its door opened unto us this morning that there is a um, sound coming forth, ushering forth out of this place that we are like repeaters on this side, that we are signal receivers and we are like antennas. That we say, whenever we say, I got into the spirit and I received a word of the Lord. Trust me, that's going to have such, as was said about the oracles, that's going to have such a reality to it and it needs to. Yes. It needs to become to where if we're saying the Lord says it, it better be the Lord saying it. Yes. Because again, in Pentecost, it's created too much confusion trying to hit the mark. Saying, I think this is a prophecy from the Lord. I hope so. And I'm going to give it anyway and hope for the best. I'm going to roll the dice. That's reckless. If it's not of the Lord, we don't want it. And that may be that you're able to hear from the Lord, but it doesn't mean every service you got to get a prophecy or give a prophecy. Because if it's not for the Lord this Sunday, then we don't want it. If it's not for the Lord on Monday for that person, we don't want it. See, that's our religious training is we have to show up and pray and uh, get before the Lord and do all these things day in and day out to be in our right place. But I'm telling you, the great chess player is going to begin to know, uh, begin to have us know when it's our time and when it's not our time. When we blow the trumpet and when we don't blow the trumpet. When we're in a sila and when we're in a place of action. When we're in between songs and when we're playing the song. I don't know the best way to say it, but see, God isn't rambunctious and just noisy all the time. There's silence in heaven at times. There's peace. If there was just racket, there would be no peace in heaven. And I believe that's that place of the spirit. I'm seeing it and I'm trying to, trying to explain it there. Uh, embedding itself into us is the best way I know how to say it. But it's that place where things have happened, things have occurred. And then we pause for a moment and we let them assimilate into us. We allow them to take place in us. We don't just get excited and get ready for the next thing. We stop for a moment. Not just intellectually and mentally and think and ponder, but our, literally our bodies, I think, are going to need that. Because as the word of the Lord comes forth, this is that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. We need to allow our bodies to receive that word. We need to allow our minds to receive that word, our souls to receive that word, and not get antsy and get to the next thing. Or again, judge it or weigh it or cast it out or pick it back up or do whatever with it. We just got to sit before it, before the throne of God, and receive it. And I believe that's going to come in the services too. I believe there's going to be things done. And then there's going to be a moment of just basking in the glory. No, no uh, light words when I say that. There's going to be a glory that just begins to permeate the word I was looking for. It's going to permeate us. It's going to become real to us. And we don't have to get up and tell everybody about it because they're doing the same thing as we're doing. <laughs> they're experiencing the same thing we're experiencing. Yeah. They're getting the same word that I'm getting and we don't have to just talk about it anymore. Yeah. We're not counting on Bob to get a message every Sunday or Gary to get a message. Yeah. The pressure is coming off the ministry and it's going to begin, begin to be a flow. That's the only way to have what we were talking about at the meetings, ever to have an open pulpit again. It's for people to get in their place and begin to learn how to flow in the Lord and play their trumpet in the Lord. That's really what everybody wants. But if we try to do it by the flesh and do it to appease people, it misses the mark and it creates those trumpets sounding out of tune every time. And then nobody is blessed by it besides the person's ego that needs to feel good about talking about whatever. What a day. <laughs> how do we get there? How do we get there? It's, it's mind-boggling to think about it, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm having more of that myself to where every service I come in 
and I just see and hear and know um, things that are going to happen and things that are being said. And again, I pray this is your experience. You don't have to be here. I pray that you join online and wherever you're at in your home, you're starting to hear and see things before and as they're happening. Because again, we don't want ministry just getting up and getting into a place to just give you back a word. We want us to gather together in one accord in that upper room. To where when we come out of that place and we're speaking, you can receive the tongues. You can have understanding. You don't just think that we're drunkards. Because if you're not in it, it's going to sound like foolishness to you. It's going to not make sense to you. But I'm telling you too also, just as was said earlier, I believe that and I've been saying that for a while, Gary, that I truly believe God is going to put us in places we think we shouldn't be. And, and kingdom ministry are going to ridicule us because they're going to say you shouldn't be over there. And it's going to become less about what people preach and about us being able to come in the midst of them. And again, we're not going to go in the midst of them to tear down their heavens. We're going to be there. And sometimes we may not do anything. Because again, we think we got to go in the midst of them to set it all straight. <laughs> we don't have the answers to do that. We don't have the keys yet to do that. Because we have not matured to the place for Jesus truly to give us those keys to the kingdom. <laughs> we know, I know. Yeah, we know that we're, again, we'll say we got all these keys and all these things. But we've been given a key before and what did we do with it? We're like that teenager that got the car early and went and wrecked it. <laughs> we were given the key and we didn't act wisely. But I'm telling you, Jesus is getting ready to demonstrate some things to a people. Even us that thought we have seen things. I am telling you, there is so much in this place that is beyond our wildest imaginations. There is so much in the throne room. So much experience that's yet to be had. And I just, I, I keep saying it, but it's so real to me that it, it is just a place that is not a far off. That's a place where our loved ones are, people we don't know, the apostles, Jesus. There is such a gathering. And again, we think, how does everybody get there? Because we think natural. It's a place that's not bound by time and space and matter. Everyone that's been called in that place is gathered there. In that mansion. In that many-membered body, in that place prepared in heaven that has many rooms in Jesus. And there are still those that are on the outside of the city wailing and gnashing and seeing it and trying to get in. On this side as well as that side. That's not just a far-off event to where one day there's going to be a city and people are going to be on the outside. There are people right now, and that's what I'm seeing as we go into the midst of these people. There are people that are sitting in torment in circles that we would call called out, chosen kingdom, all those things. Because the glory has dissipated. Because there's only one thing that brings that light of the city, and that's the glory of the Lord. And they may have known that glory, and it may have dissipated in the midst of them. And they can't go back into the church realm, but they've been called out and left out in the wilderness, and it's grown dim, it's grown dark, it's grown weary. And they're seeing it, and that's, I pray that we stay in our place to be that in the earth, that catalyst that draws people back to where they need to be. We become that city up on the hill. We become those living flames of fire. We become those light bearers. To where if they've lost hope, because there have been people that have been in this message, and you would think there's no way they could no longer believe this thing. And I look back through videos. I, asked, I mean, I've talked to Bob enough to know. I've talked to Gary. I've talked to, you know, people that there have been people that have been hurt by this thing. There have been people that no longer want anything to do with it. And again, they probably got to where they don't want anything to do with church. They're sitting outside in torment, in pain, in agony, as onlookers now into what God's doing. So are we going to be the people that raise up and become something that people see there's, there's Jesus there. There's love there. There's mercy. There's, there's grace. Are we going to say this is what we've done? This is what we've always done. This is what kingdom is and this is how it goes. Um, so it's going to be different. It's going to be 
um, uncomfortable. It's going to be in season because, again, as much as we think we don't know how to operate it, we are going to trust, and that's what I saw this morning in so many services. Jesus is just going to give it as it needs to be given. Again, we don't have to sit down all week and prepare for it. Now, he's going to use those things, but he's just going to start to give it. It's going to be in the moment. We're going to know they need that word. They need that song. They need this. They need that. And we've always said that, the divine flow of the Lord. But I'm telling you, that's not just a ministry that has to hear that. That's a people. Hallelujah. So I pray that you allow God to get a hold of you. <laughs> I'll leave, you, well, I'll leave you with a joke to lighten it back up. Not a formal joke, but uh, I was thinking as Bob was saying this, Gary, that uh, about the triangle in the orchestra that you get the ding and the ding. Well, we got the uh, dings, but Bob has the ding-dongs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Bob's a ding-dong. So, but uh, <laughs> so I love you all this morning. Uh, bless you. Hope you're, again, following along with us, not just joining the try to weed out what we say and what we don't say. And is this the message? Is this not the message? Because I know for me personally, I don't get up really mindful of those things. I really don't. I hope you are following. I hope it's things you receive. I just, I don't get up to minister to try to lay out doctrine or lay out messages or um, even hope it makes sense. It's really not what we're trying to accomplish. I know in my spirit and in my heart, you know, we're, we're getting to the place to where it's crucial that we minister life and life only. Amen. In a service like this, I just sit there and I'm in awe of what God's doing. <laughs> you know, I, I, when Gary was over here saying that, uh, and when you're moving in the spirit, you don't know why you're doing things. You don't know, you have no forethought. It's just all of a sudden, the spirit speaks something out of you. The spirit does something. And when Gary confirmed what the Spirit had been saying through me, it meant an awful lot to me uh, because my mind is, I'm on a lot of drugs, uh, not illegal, <laughs> but they're drugs and uh, uh, they mess with your mind a lot. Uh, the gabapentin that I'm on, um, I'm on quite a few other I'm taking more medicine now than I've ever in all my life ever thought I would. But anyway, uh, what I mean by that is is that um, I, I, um, I am constantly wanting to make sure that I'm moving in the Lord and not in myself because it's kind of blurry at times. Uh, so that really meant a lot to me. Uh, and all the confirmations that were spoken here this morning, I got something out of every one. And uh, Phyllis, with the with the uh, dark circle and the light coming out from it, what a powerful thing! Do you know that if everything was light, you wouldn't be able to see anything. You'd be just as blind as if you were in the dark. So you need darkness in order to shine the light. The more dark it is, the stronger the light appears. And you know, out of the darkness of our humanity, Phyllis, Christ, the light, is appearing. Glory. So uh, uh, that's that meant a lot to me to hear that because... 
It just uh, made me see it. it. It's happening that way. Uh, God isn't letting our, uh, because we're not there yet. We're not perfect yet. Uh, now, perfect doesn't mean sinless. Uh, perfect just means complete. All together. And uh, I'm not complete yet, and I don't believe anyone is. But uh, we are getting to that place where we're not satisfied with where we're at. And man, that means that our spirit's starting to understand some things. That uh, we can't force ourselves to be in another place, but yet at the same time we understand, you know what, this is passing. I can hear the passing of it. Uh, just like the scripture says, elements burning up, the old earth and the old heavens burning up, and a new earth and a new heaven taking their place. And the remembrance of those old heavens and old earth will not come into our mind. I'm becoming more and more convinced it's our mind that God is dealing with. Uh, what I want to do is stay there. <laughs> I'm getting tired of getting raised up and then going down. But there's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. But man, I am starting to get a real hunger to stay in that place. And, you know, I don't believe we'll be shouting and jumping in that place. Uh, we, we may be just still, silent, until God speaks. But that place is so uh, tangible to our spirit. If we're truly in the spirit, we can actually see these things in our spirit. This morning I saw that the wolf and the lamb shall lie down and feed together. Those, uh, I, I don't know how, that's why I know God was moving on Charlotte to write those songs. I've never ever seen anybody write for that a long time songs that are so full of, of truth and life that every time I sing them, they lift me in the Lord. And uh, I, I don't want to exalt Charlotte by any means, but it's, it's like, let me get there, Lord. Let me be in that place where I can hear from you that way, where I can actually, uh, don't have to write a song, but we can, uh, see where those things are very are, are actually uh, active in us, as, as Zach said. Uh, we have to become activated in this day. But I see that in us. I see that we are being activated. Divine nature activated. DNA. Hallelujah. And that, that DNA of God that is in you and I is not going to be remain dormant. It is, it is being written in us and it's starting to take form and substance. Hallelujah. And a DNA is a, such a thing to where you can't govern how tall you're going to be or how short you're going to be or how uh, big you're going to be or how small you're going to be. Uh, DNA governs that. It was written in your DNA from your mother's womb. And she passed on to you things DNA-wise that was given to her from her mother's womb. And that's how it goes. We are receiving from, from generations of God life that has been given to others throughout the ages past and all the ages are building up one upon the other, one upon the other, one upon the other. That's why I say the seventh trumpet 
is seven trumpets. It's not like an individual trumpet of a seventh trumpet. It is the culmination of the compilation of the former trumpets. So it's, it, it's not just a singular instrument there or a sound. It's the voice of many waters. It's the sound of many instruments joining together to form this, this, this sound that is going to raise the dead, heal the sick, cause the blind to see, hallelujah, all those old Pentecostal things we used to say all the time, and we were only talking natural, but now we're talking spiritual, hallelujah. Eyes are gonna open, Jane, hallelujah. People are gonna see Jesus again in a new and a living way, and not the, the man from Galilee, but the risen Christ, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And that's where... I see the reality of this thing just getting a hold of us. Praise God. But I, I, I thank God for the flow and the, and the harmony that God had in the midst of us. And I hope that everyone, as Zach has already said, uh, uh, on the, the internet has, has been able to feel that and to enter into it and become a part of it. Amen. Uh, if anyone wants to write to us, P.O. Box 0519. Dixon, Tennessee, 37056, and it's the house of the Lord. Praise God. Don't forget to tune in uh, with Gary for Tuesday nights, uh, uh, an evening in Paris, heavens on fire. And uh, one more evening in Paris, then you and I are going to have to go back to our Monday existence in Dixon, Tennessee. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but they are uh, uh, starting to get everything relocated, and uh, they'll be moving out of uh, Paris, Tennessee, and uh, can't wait to see what God has for us next. Praise God. It's going to be exciting. Praise God. Father, I, want, I bless everyone in your name. Father, I'm praying that each and every one will be lifted up into the glory of their Father, that your face, O oh Lord, would shine forth through them, that that light would pierce the darkness and cause everything to be enlightened and raised into a higher dimension. Lord, I'm asking that you will keep us, hold us in your hand, Lord. And Lord, may we stay in this mind that is the mind of Christ that, has res that is resident within us. I pray that we will stay in that mind. This week, Lord, don't let us enter into our old habits, but let us come forth into the new life of Christ. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for this service, and I pray, God, that the people will be blessed in the days to come. Amen. All right, everybody, God bless.